All right, in this video, you're gonna learn how to take these pictures and turn it into this. There's a ton of useful tips and tricks throughout this walkthrough, including advanced masking, as well as color correction. And with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so the first step is to clean and mask. So you can do this by having your quick selection tool selected and with your players layer, you're going to want to hit select subject. This is Photoshop's interpretation of the subject that you want to work with. And so usually it does a pretty accurate job, but you can always add and subtract depending on the outline that they give you. Next, we are going to add an unsharp mask. So you can go to filter, scroll down to sharpen, and then unsharp mask. You can use the magnifying glass in order to zoom in or zoom out to see your subject. And then you can adjust the amount of sharpening that you want to include and it's gonna be different for every player. So you have to adjust these sliders based on what player and what the lighting is. Next, we are going to add a camera raw filter. So go up to filter and then scroll down to camera raw filter. And if you're a subscriber, you know that I adjust these two every single time, no matter what the player is and that is texture and clarity and for this graphic i also increased the contrast because the player had a lot of black and white shadows on his body and so i felt like that would look a little bit better and it did and then for highlights and shadows i usually do the opposite so if i increase my highlights i also decrease my shadows and vice versa and then once that was done i added a high pass filter to each one of my subjects this can be done by first duplicating the layer that you want to put the high pass filter on and then going to filter, scrolling down to other, and then finding high pass filter. And then what you can do is you can change the blend mode to either hard light or soft light. All right, next we have levels adjustments. So you wanna to go to new adjustment layer and then hit levels, and we are going to be using the blend mode multiply. So once you have that with the layer mask selected, you're gonna to wanna to hit command I to invert the mask, and then you can paint back on those dark shadows with the white paintbrush. This is an effect that I love to do because it really brings out the bright spots within your player. All right, step number two is to design the background. So if you look at the top right hand corner here, the background is subtle and does a really good job at bringing out the layers that I want to be in the foreground. So the first thing I did was roughly cut out the player as well as a picture of like a huddle. I used a soft edge brush in order to create this slight effect and it looks like they're almost fading off. This can be done by using any brush as long as the hardness is set to zero. All right, while I'm looking for the background that I'm gonna be using, I wanna say if this video gets 100 likes, I will release the PSD file for you guys to use. You'll be able to have it. It's gonna be a Google Drive link in my next video's description. So if it gets 100 likes, that will be completely free and everyone will be able to access it. All right, taking a look at the background here, I decided to invert the grunge layer that I chose. And what that does is it basically changes the colors uh, to the opposite color. So as you can see, it changed all the whites to the blacks and then all the blacks to the whites. I also added a picture of a stadium, the university stadium, and I used that same soft edge brush to erase the edges. So if you look at the image as it is right now, your background is way too strong. Like the images that I use are just way too strong and they aren't blending into the background like I like. So I went up to image, I went to adjustments and then went to hue and saturation and I turned the lightness all the way up to the right. And so what that did is it just made it a more of a white tone and it blended into the background. All right, this next step is something I believe that every sports designer should know how to do. And so I have this picture of the university's main sign here, but I wanna get rid of the background. I wanna get rid of the sky in the background. So what you can do is you can duplicate your layer and you double click on the top layer and then you're gonna to wanna to move the right slider to the left. So what that does, it gets rid of everything that is that shade of white and brighter. And so now you have a top layer with the whites deleted and the underlying layer with the whites still there. And so now what you can do is you can just delete that underlying layer where the sky would have been. I also added the school's mascot to the background with some simple masking and camera raw filter in order to match it with the other layers. 
The school's primary logo didn't fit in well, so I wanted to use a bevel in order to make the bottom part darker and the top part brighter with a little bit of a shine on it. You can see the specific adjustments that I made if you just pause the video right here. The fourth step is to add shadows, so I had a player standing on top of the gym and wanted to look as realistic as possible, so you have to add shadows to the feet as well as where the player would be standing. So I used a black brush to go around the feet and then I added a Gaussian blur and then I did the same technique for the player shadow. So I first put a black dot and then I changed the perspective on it so that it was a little bit bigger and then I added a Gaussian blur to that. You want your shadows to look as natural as possible so I turned down the opacity a little bit and because I thought the shadow looked a little bit too strong. So the first color correction that I made was Vibrance and I did this in order to bring out those colors that might have been muted a little bit and Vibrance does a really good job and the next thing I did was use a color lookup. So I used the color lookup 3 strip and I lowered the opacity to around 40% because I thought the effect was a little bit too strong and I like how 3 strip gives me the reddish look because it matches the school's colors. The next thing I did was add a black and white adjustment layer and I decided to set it to soft light because of how the shadows look whenever I hit it with soft light. The shadows looked a little bit darker and the brighter parts seemed to pop a little bit more so that's definitely something that you guys can experiment with. The next thing is selective color. So selective color is really useful when you want to change specific colors in your edit. So for example, I want my reds to be a little bit brighter because that's the school's main colors. And I want them to be a little bit more noticeable. So you can see the specific adjustments that I made so it looks a little bit more vibrant as well as brighter. I also made some subtle adjustments with curves and what that does is just increases my brightness a little bit in specific areas of the graph. The last thing I did was add a little bit of lighting. I used a black soft brush to go around the outside and I did that so that the main focus of the graphic is right in the center where all the layers are. Sometimes the effect might be a little bit too strong for you, so you always can lower the opacity. And once I finish that, this is my final result. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please feel free to like, and if you guys learned anything, leave me a comment, or if you have a question, leave me a comment. And as always, stay safe and have a good one.